Hi everybody, this is Michelle with Half the National Average and I'm coming to you this Friday with Habit Hack 108 and I'm really excited. Um, I did one on Instagram but this is going to be a little bit different because you only have 10 minutes on Instagram to explain pretty, for me, uh, exciting kind of concept and so I just wanted to get a little bit more than... 10 minutes possibly maybe 11 to give away my giveaway for today which is this big huge sundial looking watch it does need a battery but um i don't know who is it by tst something i don't know i like it it's was fun it's big um but uh that can be yours if you join this project pick a habit that you want to practice for 15 minutes every day and you need to let somebody know and tag them on this, letting them know you're starting this project. Okay, so today, Habit Hack 107, we talked all about, well, not all about, but slightly about black swans. And black swans, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about black swans. So Nassim uh, Nicholas Talib, who wrote the book Black Swan, and he gives an example, and I just wanted to share that example. It's a little bit kind of sad, but it gives you an idea that sometimes people think black swans are just completely unpredictable. Nobody could predict them events. And what he does is he describes the story of a turkey. And the turkey's born, the turkey's taken care of, the turkey's fed, kept warm, water every day is cared for by the farmer. And day one, day two, month one, month two, year one, year two, and every single day is the same. The turkey gets cared for, the turkey gets watered, the turkey gets fed, the turkey's warm, the turkey's cool when it's hot. And the turkey, in its very short existence, has nothing but good things to, good things to say about this farmer, right? It has no idea of any kind of black swan event that would possibly be harmful for this turkey. Now, come the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which the farmer had always intended to be the slaughterhouse day, the turkey goes out to get its meal and slammo, it gets slaughtered for Thanksgiving dinner for the next day. Now, that is a black swan event for the turkey. Because the turkey had no idea, there was no way for that turkey to predict from its past experience, from the horizon of things it saw, and from everything it's ever had any kind of idea about that that particular day, it would horribly get slaughtered for who knows what. I mean, it doesn't know what, but the farmer knows what. And the idea of black swans not being black swans for the people who know, which was the farmer. The farmer knew all along that that event, that was not, that was a planned event. So sometimes we can get really tripped up on things that happen, but like I had said before, it's just not in our cycle our cycle of existence. So our cycle might be the sw black swan events here. That's actually a black swan, not a turkey. And then our life, and then our our kids' life, our kids, 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 kids. Anyway, that was Habit Hack number 107. Look it up if you wanna know more about Habit Hack 107. But this is all about the idea that because of the turkey and because of thinking about black swans and because of thinking about we don't know what we don't know and we need to challenge what we do know because what we do know could be false. What if what we know is really a white swan and the black swan is just the reverse of what we don't know and we just never considered it? What? Okay, so let me just share. This is what I came up with. And I've been working on this for a month, and so I validated for some of you, not everybody this is gonna work, but I validated for some of you this is gonna work. And it's about changing the concept of time for yourself. Now, why does time, st why does the day start at 12 a.m. for almost, almost every country, most countries, the day starts at 12 a.m. Now, partly because the Romans used the sundial most famously, and the highest point of the sun is 12 p.m., which they made 12 p.m. I mean, they created the 12 p.m., but they figured the opposite of that is 12 a.m., so that becomes the beginning of the day because it's the opposite of the highest point of the sun. But if 12 
a.m. is the fixed point on your solar day, then that means your sunrise is always going to move, right? It's variable because it, it, it because it does. I mean, that's just going to be a whole nother freaking habit hack if I have to describe that. But you know that the sunrise is variable and so is the sunset. But is it really variable? No, it's not. It's just because your perception of it is variable because the fixed point is 12, 12 a.m. But if your sunrise was the fixed point, then 12 a.m. would be variable and the sunrise would be exactly the same. Think about it. That blows my mind. When I thought about that and thought about and thought about it, we use this fixed point and it's just really made up. And so what I decided to do is it's this time reference is just that's a white swan. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what a black swan looks like in time for myself. So instead of starting my day at 12 a.m. when most people are sleeping and the calendar flips, I deliberately create my switch point for over a month now as my day begins at the time I go to sleep. And so it is a variable point. Now, the only fixed point for me is when I have to be at work the next day. Now, that is a fixed point because if I have to be at work, let's say I work early at 6 a.m. or even later, but whatever, let's just say early, 6 a.m. or even 4.30 a.m., which is sometimes how early I go to work, then I count back at least two and a half hours from when I have to be at work and then another eight hours for how many hours I'm supposed to be sleeping. And then that's the beginning of my day. And I plan it every single day that way. So the fixed point is the work point, but the variable is when my day starts, which is when I go to sleep. And what that does is it subconsciously creates a message for my brain that says work is not everything. That is just a fixed point and your everything first, your day starts with you putting your sleep first. So remember the quadrants, the three quadrants that I showed you guys? It was um, eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, and then eight hours, eight hours of time that you can spend uh, on your own things. Now, we all know with commutes, crunch into sometimes our sleep. Kids can crunch into the sleep. Pets can crunch into the sleep. Um, and then also just depending on how many hours you work, how many people actually really work the eight hours, even if you have a half an hour lunch, you're still working eight and a half hours. And then you get in, you get out, you know, by the time all that's happening, it's usually nine to 10 hours. Let's just be real. So all of those blocks are getting eaten up into your personal time. Now I said it on my Instagram and I just can't not say it here too. Do not spend 4.7 of your precious left hours on TV. Those are other people's ideas. They're, I mean, I get it. You like The Bachelor. I get it. You like the new show. Oh, my friend was cracking me up. She's, it's some show about like bad marriages, the first 90 days of bad marriages. I'm like, who needs to see that? That is so depressing. But I guess when other people's lives are so miserable, it does kind of make you feel better. Um, but do something else. Do something else. Okay, so I'm going to get off of that little horse for right now. But, okay, so I started my day completely different. I started my day with sleep first. Sleep is first because that means I'm first. Now, second is uh, I wake up and right away I get to one, two, or three of my habits. I usually will try to do my exercise habit, a core habit. Um, I will do a reading or a writing habit and then I get ready for work and then I go to work. So by the time I go to work, that is in the middle of, that's the fixed point. That is in the middle of my already very fulfilling day. So no matter how crappy that day might be, I have already gotten things in under my belt that have pleased me, have calmed me, that made me feel better. And, um, Again, this is a black swan moment for me because time is really not fixed other than what was created by the Romans. You know, the Romans kind of set everything up. Let me see that I got all this because I want to make sure you guys got it. And you see, that's why you get this gift if you, if you like it and you start this project and you tag somebody. This can be yours. I give something away on every one of my 
Linda called it a pod, a mini podcast. I don't know. It's like a mini rant about habits and how um, you can, you can do, you can do it. All right. Let's see. That's it. That's it. I just said, I decided to visit Black Swania. I don't know. That sounds kind of bad uh, with my perception of time. Okay. So that's it. Habit hack 108. Click, click, click. Done, done. I hope you enjoyed it, Doris. Thank you so much for going out to lunch with me and hopefully the black swan and the turkey stories don't hurt your feelings because she's vegan. It's just a story. All right, you guys, have a great day.